going on everybody welcome to today's installment of Mike's vehicle vlogs and I want to thank you for joining me today this is gonna be a stupid little video uh, honestly don't know how far I'm going to really dig into this uh, at least today but I uh, had a had a really bizarre uh, situation happen with this delightful 03 Pontiac Grand Am GT of mine and it goes like this so I'm driving along I'm heading home from work one day and as I'm driving along, I know I'm getting ready to, like, pass somebody that I know, personally. So, you know, as I'm sure anybody would, I'm driving along, and I see this person, and I got, decide to go, beep, beep, you know, and then, hey, and then I carry on on my drive. So, we hit the horn, and, uh, you know, just, you know, beep, beep, just to get their attention and wave. So then I'm driving home, I'm driving home, and I'm almost at my house when all of a sudden, beep, the horn automatically comes on and it's staying on. <laughs> and uh, I have I hit the hub a few times here to get it to shut up. All right. So uh, you know I gotta I decide instead of coming home I decided to drive around for a few more minutes. Uh, there's an area, you know, not far from here where it's kind of wooded. You know, there's really no houses or anything. So I'm driving along there and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tooting the horn every so often. And then, you know, every so often it's sticking again. Uh, what I've discovered was when I, when I hit this side, the horn seems to work okay, works normally. When I hit this side, this side wants to stick. Um... So, my assumption is, like I said, this is pretty stupid. I don't know if we're really going to resolve it today or not, but I figured it might be worth a video uh, to see how it plays out. Um, my assumption is the contact behind the airbag hub, maybe on this side in particular, is uh, sticking or, or, or something. Um, when I got home, I pulled the relay out for the horn, so the relay is right here. And so, you know, as we can see, if we push this, we got nothing. Now, um, I'm not 100% sure if um, the contact is directly behind the hub itself. I would think it'd have to be, but there may also be contacts in the airbag itself, maybe. I don't know. Sometimes these whole hubs will move, you know. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, I don't really use the horn on this car enough. Um, I know uh, early on in the life of the ownership of this car, we had to replace the horn because somebody wired in an improper horn. So we went to the junkyard. We found the correct horn for a Grand Am. Had to re uh, get a new harness and stuff for it. So it's all rewired. So everything works fine. Except something in the wheel, I'm assuming, is giving it the uh, ability to stick. And I'm thinking it's something on this side in particular. So, I don't know. I, what I'm planning on doing is taking the airbag hub off again. Um, did it once before for the uh, cruise control buttons. So, probably going to take this off again. Um, and see if there's anything in particular behind this that maybe we can fix possibly um, but first we're going to do a little experiment now if you have a problem with the horn sticking it very well could be that the switch here inside your steering wheel the contacts are grounded so or you could have a wire that's pinched possibly so you have a short to ground uh, on the switch um, or the relay themselves uh, could also be bad mechanically. Um, so, uh, we obviously know the relay works because the horn works. Um, so, yeah, what we're going to do is, I got this relay out, we're going to go under the hood, and uh, we're going to use our little scope on a rope here that I brought home from work with me today. Um, and, we're going to obviously determine because I tried looking for an exact pinout of the relay and what 
you know, what's control side, where our powers are, and all this stuff. So we're just going to kind of do it like this. But we're going to find all of our powers first that control the relay and whatnot. Then we're going to, you know, look for our grounds. And one of the grounds is going to end up being the control side, which will be the switch. So if theoretically, if we hook this test light up to the battery positive, and we find the correct pin where the um, where the control side is for this, then when we push on our our horn switch here, our test light should light up. And if something in this steering wheel sticking when I push on this side or whatnot, this light will stay lit until we either get it loose or or something like that. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have fun with the test light. Now, I did find a wiring schematic. This is an OEM schematic from GM for this Grand Am. So here's how our horn system works. Now, we have a hot at all times, obviously battery power here. And there's one fuse that is in the fuse block under the hood. It's fuse 43, it's a 15 amp. This uh, fuse gets power all the time. And then as you can see here, it splits off to our relay, which is what we pulled. There's obviously two sides to the relay. If you don't understand how a relay works, then this is actually a really easy schematic to kind of determine how the circuit works. So um, this is basically our power side here. Now, when we get to the control side, you're going to see there are two things here that basically control the horn. There is the actual switch here, which is in the steering wheel, or as they call the horn slip ring. The cancel cam is part of the steering column. That's the thing that's supposed to release your turn signal when you turn the wheel back. So there's that. But anyway, so we have the horn switch here. Um, it is listing the turn signal multifunction switch could very well be going through that, uh, apparently, but um, anyway, we'll just keep going up. So basically, your horn switch is acting as a ground, and when you ground out the switch, you know, the little contact in there, you switch it over to the ground side, that's going to complete the circuit, therefore grounding out this side of the relay, and this side of the relay is basically an electromagnet. So when that grounds out, the magnet is basically on. It flips a switch on the other side of the relay inside, closes that powered circuit there, turns on the horns. And obviously the horns have their own ground, which is, uh, looks like G101. Uh, so that's basically how that works. The other thing that controls the horn is the BCM. This is for the alarm or panic alarm. Um, it's got an internal relay so if you hit your little panic button or if you flip the uh, the alarm off somehow or maybe if, even if you're in an accident. I think the horn will sound if you're in an accident too. Internal relay will close ground itself out. The uh, BCM has its own ground so it'll command its own relay to ground it out, basically this, the system works again from there. Grounds out that, doo -doo -doo, energizes this, closes this, horns will sound. So basically with the relay, we're going to have two power sides to the relay. There's going to be our control side here, and then an ordinary ground for the horn itself. When we hook our battery up to, or our test light up to battery um, ground, battery negative, we're going to find our two powers because the test light will light up. Um, when we go to find our gr uh, the grounds that we need, battery positive will be our, our test light. And then we shouldn't have anything at the one ground. The other ground is going to be, you know, as battery positive, is probably going to sound the horn when we touch it with the test light. So basically, the one that doesn't get any light when we put our test light to it 
is going to be our control side and we should not have anything light up with the test light until we push on the steering wheel so let's go see if this will work out the way that i'm imagining <laughs> now there is of course a, a much easier way to test it actually this is probably there's I don't know, there might be three different solutions that you can use to test this. Um, the first solution is obviously to leave the relay in. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when you push on the horn, whether it sticks or not, da 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 I don't want to disrupt my neighbors. So that is the real reason why the relay was pulled to begin with. Um, another thing you could do is take your test light or even a voltmeter, and uh, you can go to the horn itself. Now, on this car... The horn is back behind here. There's really no way for me to get to it, um, as you can clearly see, unless I remove the headlight or the front bumper, uh, maybe the wheel well, but um, I know the connector, I think, is more so in this direction anyway. It's a little further down. I, like I said, I don't think there's a way to get to it. I'm not going through that. That's why I'm going straight to the relay source first. Um, but same thing, you know, if you were to take your, um, if you were actually diagnosing a horn issue, you know, from there to there, um, for maybe an in-op horn, unhook the horn, push on the horn button with like a, either your ohm meter or volt meter or a test light hooked up to the correct wiring. There's only, uh, you know, power and a ground there. And uh, if your test light lights up, then you know your circuit is 100% good. You have a bad horn, pretty much. Here is where that relay goes. So you can see the, the clean spot there. Uh, oh, I don't think my test light will fit in there. It might. That's a pretty pointy test light. And yeah, it should fit down in there. So I don't know how well this is going to work on the, the camera, the angle. Uh, man, my battery did not charge. But, um, yeah, so like I said, we need to find our powers first because I don't want to put power to power, obviously. Um, so, what we'll do is we will take our test light. We will hook our test light to battery negative. Hopefully this is going to be a good connection because that looks a little iffy. Uh, test your test light. Let's remove this cap here. Oh, that don't look too good either. Does our test light light? It does. All right. So let's see. Let's see if we can find uh, our powers. That's not gonna fit. Oh no. Well, this is not working out the way I was hoping. Thought maybe that would be. Wish I had like a relay jumper, but I don't. <sighs> Durettes. And I really didn't want to put the relay back in there, obviously, because I don't want the horn to be going off like crazy. <sighs> so, uh, this plan has failed. Oh, yeah, I'm going to regret doing that because that's going to be a pain to get back in. Um, but there it is, there's the horn. So, we unplug it. Oh good, Julie's home. That means I can have her push the button. All right, so the green one, which is going to this side, the green wire is going to be the power. The black one's obviously the ground. Let's not drop that. Uh, to really execute this, we have to hook our relay back in. If I plug the relay in and we hear it click, that means the horn switch has already been stuck. So, let me find this thing that I put down in here somewhere. Oh, nope, not there. There it is, on the seat. I'm going to need your assistance. 
All right, let's see if it clicks. It did not click. All right, so there's no clicking. Horn's off. Just out of curiosity. Okay, so now it's the, that's the right side. If I hit the left side. It appears to be working just fine. I push on it, it clicks, I let go, it clicks again. It doesn't sound like it's sticking this time on either side. It may have just been a fluke. Alright. Alright, so I got her in the car. We're gonna we have our test light hooked up to battery negative, so when we probe, I'm not sure what you guys can see. When we probe. Oh, I dropped it. Hold on. When we probe the green wire, which is from the control side, this test light should light. That's... Hold on a second. Oh, wait, that's full-time power. Interesting. So we don't have anything here. Let me reverse the test light real quick. Because this is... Getting power. Hold on. Hold on a second. So we have that hooked up to battery positive. Let me check the test light. Okay, we got good contact. So let's go to this one. Oh no, I'm getting. Ugh, this is not working out the way I was expecting. Okay. Unless. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, as you seen in the last clip, hopefully, because the camera view is kind of crappy. Um, didn't matter which side uh, that I was testing with this particular wiring harness here for the horn. We were getting power. The test light was getting power at both ends. Does not matter. So, um, I had my wife, you know, tap the horn a little bit. Nothing shut off. Nothing went on. So, I decided to, you know, take the relay. We kind of bumped the relay in there a little bit. And as you can see, the horn is indeed on now. So we kind of caught it in the act, um, which is weird because, you know, I was kind of messing with it. We heard the relay kind of clicking on and off, da, 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 da. but now it seems to be stuck entirely. So I even took another relay, another known good relay. It's the same exact one. And if we, you know, just get it to kind of bump into that, the horn is still stuck. So, I think that that pretty much confirms the fact that it's in the wheel. And uh, that means the contacts here are stuck somehow. Now, I did pull the airbag fuse out already with the anticipation of obviously taking this apart. So, just kind of bouncing on this. I want to see if it, you know, breaks anything free. Just out of curiosity, I don't want to keep having the horn go off because of my neighbors, you know, so. Yeah, so it's still stuck. So let's go ahead, take the, uh, take the airbag out, see what we got going on. Um, I already made a video about taking all this stuff apart too when we did the cruise control things. My camera doesn't have a whole lot of memory or battery left, so I'm gonna skip all that part. But, to do the, uh, to take this off, you have to remove this column shroud. Uh, it's a two-piece shroud, so you just gotta get the top half up. Um, to make it easier, because this screwdriver is so long, uh, I take the gauge bezel out, that way I have more room to get my screwdriver uh, here, actually. Then what you have to do, is you turn the wheel and uh, there's two uh, T90s that are kind of hidden by the shroud here but you're gonna have one here on this side of the steering wheel basically and then there's another one over here so you gotta turn the wheel get your T30 uh, 
bit or screwdriver back there and uh, that's how you do that. You take those screws out, this airbag hub will come off. Again, make sure you disconnect the airbag if you are trying this. I advise you not to do this at all if you are somebody who has no knowledge about airbag systems. The airbag fuse is located on the driver's side of the instrument panel. It is fuse E. It's a 10 amp fuse, fuse E. My door doesn't open all the way, but it is right where that little missing spot is between those two tens there. Uh, the fuse has been out for like well over 20 minutes. The whole system should be deactivated. I'm not unplugging the airbag, but I do want to lift it up. I want to look and see what we have going on back here. Kind of forgot how big a pain it was to actually do this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take this off. The screws for the back of this are going to be laying in there. So let's uh, bring this up carefully, very carefully. All right. There we go. Up. Don't fall. Okay. Let me uh, retrieve our screws here. Hold on. Oh, the one's still in the uh, thing. All right. Oh, there it is. All right, so. What do we have going on here? I think. Let's see, we have uh, obviously our airbag uh, inflator connector there. There's a ground there. And there's another wire there. Uh, the horn is probably built into the airbag hub. Let me see. I think it is. Well, darn. I was thinking maybe there was something back here that would make contact with the horn. Uh, you know, another possibility could be the clock spring, which is right there. You can kind of see the label on it. The whole wheel has to come off for that. Um, um, yeah, I think... The actual contact for the horn, I believe, is in this hub, unfortunately. Darn, I was really thinking it, there might be something back there. Um, yeah, so there's really, I don't think, anything else that I can do at this point other than leaving the relay unplugged. Um, I don't really feel like searching for another airbag hub, to be quite honest with you. Um, but you can kind of hear the whatever pad or what, whatever it is in here make contact a little bit when, when you push on the horn. Um, it's probably still stuck <laughs> right now. Uh, if we were to um, check the relay again. So, probably going to need a switch. I'm probably not going to do it. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could probably take the inflator out, <laughs> um, the igniter, But then, you know, I don't want to mess with the bag itself. I barely even want to mess with the inflator. Um, so I think... I think this is just going to have to stay as is for now. <laughs> um, I suppose I could undo the fuse. Um, but 
I don't know. I figure the relay, it, it, I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, since that fuse powers both sides of the relay. And then I can leave the relay in there and that way the contacts for the relay won't, you know, get corroded or bad for there being nothing in there. So I guess it can go both ways, but I guess the moral of the story here is we're just going to leave this horn uh, undone. Uh, I guess <laughs> there's, there's really, uh, I guess there's really nothing else I can do about it uh, at this time. So I'm just going to leave it unplugged. But it was worth a shot uh, to see if, you know, there was anything back here that contributes to the horn. And uh, apparently not. It's all inside the hub uh, from the looks of it. So game over. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, put all this stuff back together real quick. Could always unplug the horn too. But then again, I don't want the connectors to really get messed up. I don't even want the fuse connector to get messed up, you know, but hey, we're gonna try something. So the relay's still out. We shouldn't have any test light uh, on both sides now that the relay is out. So let's do, uh, let's do positive first, battery positive. So see our test light is up. So, uh, this should be the black wire. So the black wire should light. The black wire, you see, does light. So if I ground out the other one, we do battery negative. Come on. That's uh, battery negative. Let's check our test light. Hey, it works. All right. So now when I go to the dropped it. When I go to the other, the green wire, which is the command wire from the from the steering wheel basically pretty much. That's this side. We got nothing. And that's because the relay is out. Which the relay is on because the horn button is stuck. So yeah, we're in the dark green. There's nothing there. If uh, I take our relay and I plug the relay in. Boom. So it's almost like the horn switch is now permanently stuck in the on position. Relay out. No horn. Done. Ah, looks like it's going to storm again. It monsooned earlier at work. I don't think it rained so much here because the inside of the Grand Dam is still dry. Here's the moment I've been dreading. So we got everything back together. Everything's nice and tight. Now i got to plug the airbag fuse in. The dreaded airbag fuse. Oh, man. I'm always scared about plugging the airbag fuse in. So... Let's uh, say a prayer. All right, airbag fuse is in. The real, um, the real thing's gonna be turning the ignition on with it. What do I do with my keys? Oh, they're on the seat, dummy. So get down real low. Whoa, copyright. Airbag light flashes, airbag lights off. All right. Done. <laughs> all right, so I put a, the nightmare of the headlight back in. Everything else is all put back together. Um, I was looking at this fuse block here before we wrap this up and uh, there's actually, so the relay obviously for the horn is 21, that's the one that we had out. The fuse, it's 
a 15 amp fuse, number 43. And 43 is right here, right in front of this relay. And if I look at this fuse, it looks like it has been messed with before. I wonder why. Actually, that fuse looks weird. It's obviously good because we uh, had a horn, which is our whole issue. <laughs> um, so I might pull that one. Where's my, uh, I'm losing everything, guys. I got stuff all over the place. Where's my needle nose pliers? Oh, they're right there. Jeez, it's been a long day. I'm so glad it's the weekend. Yeah, so that fuse has been replaced before. That looks like a good fuse, though. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. So, with that fuse out and our relay back in, that uh, that that whole circuit's dead. So I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Like I said, I just I don't want the pins for this to get messed up. I don't really want the pins for that to get messed up either. It's like no matter which way you do it, you're kind of losing a battle here. But it's easier to get a fuse instead of going hunting for relays. I do have spares. Uh, well, no horn. Sad. Other than that, She's been doing pretty good. Her signals aren't on. Nothing's on. Okay. The starter is kind of acting a little weird again. Thought maybe it was the battery the first time, but I don't know. The starter goes through periods of it being sluggish, and then it, it kind of stops. And then it you start it up, uh, and the next few times it's perfectly fine. So I don't know. I'm going to leave it go for now. I still love this car, even though it is hornless, unfortunately. Oh, don't be alarmed. I just have to put washer fluid in it at some time. So we're gonna wrap this up. We need a new airbag hub. Uh, I don't feel like doing it, at least now, for the time being. Uh, I'm just gonna leave the fuse out and hope that I don't need a horn. In the meantime, Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Thanks again so much for watching. Take care.